Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Company, your art sherpa, and today we're having such a fun, delightful holiday paint. We're going to paint a Christmas koala. This is an adorable little koala in watercolor, step by step. But I realized that I am going to throw a really fun monkey wrench at you. Now, to help me oh. do that is my husband, John. Whoops, stunts handings. And he's going to make sure that, you know, this all works because I will just like glue it to the side of my head and then forget about it that the cameras are working you will hear his disembodied voice during the show now how this is going to work the first part i'm going to break down step by step how you draw this not just the lines like where you follow but like conceptually stuff like things to understand how it works so that it becomes part of an art skill that you carry with you i want to thank everybody who has decided to come to the live stream today because i'm doing this live um which is which is wild becoming more and more relevant by the day i am doing this live and in person for you guys um and so if you're here during the live and you have a question we love questions put it all in caps i might answer it during the show or the moderators may answer it because moderators are just people who've been here for the last 10 years and have watched 2500 videos so they know where they are <laughs> that's if you've been here for 10 years and you know all 2500 videos go ahead and write support at thearchsherpa.com to mod <laughs> No, um, but that's, we don't, we're actually pretty good. We don't, we have a very friendly community. So yes. our mods are hosts. They're not gatekeepers. They're not here to catch trolls. I mean, like we ban them pretty fast when they come in. They're literally here to help you. So if you're shy, if you have social anxiety, this is a great place to practice those reaching out skills because it's a warm fun community and we're just so happy to have you here so if you're brand new thank you thank you watch and oh my goodness we have an anniversary for suzanne who has been a member of patrons of youtube for 20 months now i hope suzanne has made sure to uh check and uh that you're you're on the zoom class and write us at support at the so you're always there because we got zoom classes and so many fun zoom things coming up all right john do you think uh, you want to help me down? So first part, draw. Second part, paint. This part's draw. Well, let's think about the concepts. Here's our cutie, 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 patootie. I love you, Mr. Koala. All right. I'm going to use uh, a bunch of unusual art materials today. Not my usual pro paints. Oh, no, no, no. I want you guys to know that no matter what your budget is, no matter what's happening in your life, no matter what's going on, the art supplies that are around your house are usable. This is all Mikador. Now I've got the 1264 Fabriano multimedia pad that is 120 pound, nine by 12. I love as an acrylic painter and a watercolor painter having a multimedia pad in my house because that means I can have a creative idea and then I can just do anything. I don't have to stop and think about getting very specific materials. I can work it out here and then take it elsewhere. You're going to see them a lot on my channel. 1264 pad. On the back of it is a kneadable or gummy eraser. <laughs> Put this guy out of the way a little bit. Now, I'm also going to be using my Mikador Dark Arts highlighter pen. And that's just so that I can show you the concept lines of the sketch so i'm going to go ahead and pop the cap on this and put it somewhere where i can find it again and let's talk about how would we draw our koala you're seeing him here how would you put him together the first thing artists like to do is think about shapes what is the core shape that we're looking at so we have is that dark enough for you john or do i need a darker one no i can adjust okay. totally for that all right i thought it'd be a good one because it would like come in and out but maybe i'm wrong well, no, I can, we can also just... I'm going to come here and <laughs> gently slope off some shoulders so we have some idea of where the objects are placed. Now, I'm noticing here that there's a good amount of round in the chin, and I don't want to lose that. There's a lovely amount of round in the cheek, and I don't want to lose that, right? Let's see if I can get some adjustments here so I can get... Cross the midway. There we go. What's important to remember is that the eyes and the nose will be kind of on the same plane. And bring that down here. All right, and we're just going the overall shape of the nose. These aren't the details. These are the sketches. I'm doing this in pen, but artists do this very lightly in pencil. And the reason we do this very lightly in pencil is because honestly, we're gonna change our minds three, four, five times. Um, we're that way. And so it's good to sort of work out shapes and ideas in light pencil marks that you can barely see. Put the little gesture here. Now the hat I love because we've got a little brim here. It's gonna come across. 
curving both these lines. I curve this line and this line, and that helps it feel like it's shaped round across the head. Now we've got a gray hat, and I have decided to go up the opposite way where I normally go. All right, so it is a scoop up and another scoop up, and then we're gonna do the fold of the hat, which is two lines that curve in, right? Now, once this is in, the eucalyptus leaves because this is a koala for Christmas. I wanted to make sure that we did uh, um, plants that would be indigenous and natural. And of course, the koala can only eat a eucalyptus. So these little leaves over here and berries are um, well, eucalyptus berries don't look like that right there. Another berry. I needed a berry. I could have done the little seed pods. I plan to do a eucalyptus still life soon. I've been working on it. Because I grew up with a hundred eucalyptus trees when I was a kid, John. Oh, wow. My mom hand planted them all. I don't know what she was doing in her free time, but digging a hole. <laughs> you got to love my mom. My mom was a person who could use a post hole digger like a champ. <laughs> all right. So we have a little sketch in, right? Like we know where things are. Now, underneath here, um, this is, this is, this is just, all step one. This I is was just turning the sketch in. Right. We, I, I forgot to put up step one after materials. Oh, okay. I, so I get I got, that. You got, to, you got to drawing and you were introducing I materials. just got into this, man. I, just, I'm just into this lesson today. That's okay. really what it is. I'm going to make sure my ears are over here. So when I loosely sketch in my light pencil lines, I'll have a structural little version of this. Now, I'm going to show you another thing you're going to need to know because this is a light pencil watercolor. Sometimes in watercolor, we do a thing called line and wash. That's where we really strongly draw the lines and then we paint over it and the combination of the sketch lines or the ink lines and the watercolor makes a beautiful piece i love it line and wash i have a lot of line and wash lessons and they're very beginner friendly but in this type of watercolor which is more traditional um you don't really see the pencil you see them a little bit but they're lighter so let me show you this john is going to kind of focus on this now you guys can see my line when i push about that hard right on the surface but really you're sketching there. You need to sketch right in here. So the way to practice that is go hard. Hard, 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 hard with your pencil. And then light and 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 light. To learn where your range of visible but nearly invisible lines is. That's just the thing you wouldn't organically know, and it's a thing you have to practice to get into. Oh, how is everybody doing? Oh, um, yeah, Moderator Rain Rainbow is reminding you. Everything you see here, if you're like, wow, that's cute. That's at the store. And I, because I'm a mom and I Christmas shop, I just want you to know that I do not believe any shipping would make it by Christmas. Am I correct? I, I don't oh, think so. Oh, my gosh. Check I the don't. Store. I would be really I shocked. I would be shocked. If it's we not fast. We're not, we're not Amazon. We're not like yeah, well, we're, but but then nobody's you know, peeing in a. It's an art <laughs> store to deliver our stuff. So. I would say we have a lot of artists that work in our facility. Mm -hmm. They are known for creativity, and for solving problems. Mm -hmm. speed, Which is not a speed thing. Speed hasn't been among the top ranked attributes mm -hmm. that they're known for. Not that they're slow, by any by any means. They're just not fast. Now over here is a set of watercolor paints for ages three to eight. By Mikador. Ooh, those are good. Right? Now, th so that's obviously not professional paint, right? This is regular, wonderful, lovely paint. Now, I do like Mikador. I think for kids' materials, they're high quality. Um, I think I like PBO and Mikador. And uh, there's another one. It will come to me later, and I'll remind you of it, that I just think do good stuff. Oh, Utrecht, weirdly. Teachers just went, yeah, they make a good temper paint. So this is what I'm going to paint my koala with today. Not fancy, not special. So I've got a multimedia pad. Uh, these are going to be around everywhere. I've got my Mikador watercolors. I've got uh, a, a little brush. And I'm going to give myself the challenge of trying to do it with the set that it came with. And I just want you to understand I'm going to use a, a regular pencil, like a, like a pencil pencil, like a school pencil. So that you guys understand that while art materials do make our lives... That's my wonderful part. The pencil sharpener does a nice long thing. While our supplies do make our life lovely, sometimes life or circumstances or events can cause us to not have access to our supplies. We're moving. Uh, we lost them. We've had a house fire. I lost everything. 
in my house fire. I lost my entire studio, my easels, my artwork, my collection, everything in a house fire. They went to the ground. And so I know how that is. Like sometimes you find yourself down to a pencil and a pad and very few things. So I'm trying to give you an example of a beautiful painting done with stuff that you might just have around your house if you've got kids around you or you can get those Crayola colors out. Though I do love the Mikadors. Whatever you got. Let us go forth and begin. Oh, here's the other reason I like the 1264 pad. Okay. You ready to see this? Wow. And it pulls out a 9 by 12. It's not a 9 by 12, the outside perimeter. This is 9 by 12. It makes it frameable. If you've got a kid who has artwork that you love, look for that. The inside perforation needs to be standard size so you're not buried under framing costs. Okay. So this will be... Tip you didn't need. <laughs> we move on to step two now. Yes, we're going to move on to step two. And I'm going to put some glasses on. What is my favorite pencil sharpener? Um... It is, there's, it's a cat. It's a cat where you stick the pencil in the eye. <laughs> and um, I don't know if the moderators remember the name of it. It's Panda. It should be under 20 bucks. But when we all go buy it on Amazon, they make it 60. It is, it's a wonderful pencil sharpener. It should be somewhere between 20 and $30 tops. And so, you know, I think that's a lot of why I didn't recommend it. The other one that I have is, this one is really fantastic. Um, oh, actually, I think it's the same company that makes these so this is the Athmat. now if you're a serious artist and you're a serious watercolorist and you don't like to sharpen with a razor blade i hate to sharpen pencils with a razor blade made me a nervous wreck in uh drawing i didn't love it i'm very clumsy i cut my finger and not my favorite so this does a long point sharpen for those of you that want longer point it's not a true art sharpen but it's long enough that you're like no risk to me little extra graphite in the thing what does it matter? We're okay. So that's my pencil sharpener. If that was helpful. Okay. So I've got my little watercolors out here. These are the Mikadors, right? Uh, low age range. And here's a trick. I don't, if you're doing less expensive watercolor, you're going to take a bottle of water and you're going to mist them all. This is activating them. You don't need to do this with the Sen LEA because it has honey in it. It doesn't need to be activated. It paints always and it reactivates easily. But dry pan watercolors for students tend to dry cake hard. Um, you may find that even with when you do the Crayola, one of the reasons that I've, I've been kind of struggling with that lately is the cracking in the cake if you pre-wet them. But I have pre-wet these through 10 failed kids' shoots <laughs> where I was trying to make a kid's show. <laughs> they didn't work and I kept having to wet them. So I have put these through the worst of the worst and you are seeing them as they have existed for me since I started using them and they have been used, what, 20, 30 times? So that's how many times they've been wet and I haven't seen any cracking. I feel pretty good about sharing them with you here. You know how long it takes me to share anything with you guys. Okay, now I'm going to take this brush and I am going to... I think I'm going to weirdly start with the fur area of the hat. I provide a traceable, and I'll make a traceable of this after the show, and you could transfer this on if you did not want to freehand him. And as soon as this is done, I will use this one to make the traceable so we're the closest together, and I'll put it up immediately after the show, like 30 minutes. It'll be there. Okay, I'm going to take my, I'm looking at this color. I see that I've got a little bit of brown. And I'll put it between my paint pans and I'm going to grab a little bit of black and I'm kind of mixing up a mid-range tone. I've got a paper towel to the side and I'm rinsing out and I'm going to come to my center water. This is just a little round brush that came with the set. And I'm going to pre-wet it a little bit. I'm making little curving strokes and I'm pre-wetting. I know it sounds unscrupulous, but that's what we're doing. We're pre-wetting. So this is just Fabriano multimedia pad. It's not my artistico white watercolor block that you guys know and love and I love. We all love so much. And already you can see that the paper is holding the water, which means that my water isn't evaporating or vanishing on me so quickly into the surface that none of the techniques will work. Now I'm going to come here to the side with that mix and very lightly work it in. Now, the reason this is working here 
and blending and doing all the stuff it's supposed to do is because there's a very good sizing on this paper. Uh, Fabriano is an 800-year-old company, something like that, and they're from Italy. You can, if you're in Italy, like, like look to go. They're a heritage company, and they're super green, and you can't think about art and not think about the inventions that they've created, the industry that they push forward, and the amazing artists that they've worked with and supported. So if you're traveling in Europe, you should go check them out. All right, I'm, you can see I'm continuing to work it. So I pre-wet it, and now I'm working the color in. And I'm going to allow that color to kind of soften. And then I'm also going to grab a paper towel. This is a great technique to teach kids when they're having trouble learning how to control their color. And I'm going to pull just a little color out of the center of that hat. See how we did? To create a little highlight. This is the brush that came with the kit. Now, since we did that there, we should probably go ahead and do a similar thing for our puff ball. So we've got our hat that's come down here. These lines are too light for you to see. That's why I ink sketch it ahead of time. And I'm going to come here and I think go ahead and build out that ball. So I'm just wetting a circle with clear water. I like to call it my clear painting time. Just playing with it a little bit. Circly, circly. Back into that color I mixed earlier. Now, the, the weight of this color is at the bottom of the ball. And because my painting is tipped, it will tend to gather at the base. So how I handle that if you're working on a tipped surface, like you're working on a drafting table, is you can use a paper towel to pick up extra moisture off your brush and lift it, or, and see how that created that little shading in there. Now I can come through with just the tip of this and make little tiny fine marks. The other reason I did this right now, I know I've got a lot of Australians that are painting with me today, and I know that you guys are um, dealing with a, uh, a, you know, the cost of art supplies is really, really high right now. So if you can't get Mikador in your area, Mont Blanc, Montmart, Montmart, Montmart Art. Yeah, Montmart. They have a YouTube channel, Australia, Montmart Art. YouTube has buried it. If you're not aware of it, go follow it. Montmart Art. That is a local art supply company that provides really good materials to your communities. And they're fantastic. I like them. I've met them. They're lovely. Um, so I haven't ever done business with them or anything. I've just, just used their products and been places where they've been and had a chance to get to meet them. So can you see how we've done darker here and darker here and darker along that ridge? And that as we've allowed this paper to dry, that this look has softened and softened and softened for us. Isn't that lovely? Nice little poofs. Oh, and I have a watercolor basics yeah, video. Yeah, no poofs. Perfectly. And then uh, Amy's not eating pink today, and I have to concur that Amy should not eat pink. Don't eat pink. <laughs> eat frosting. That's what you should eat. Now I'm going to come on, let's do a new step, and let's work on something else in our, in our space. Now one of the things I'd like to work on is maybe the eyes. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a little black out. And you can see that I'm working it just into my palette here. I'm not even using a, I'm not getting any of my paint mixing palettes out. I'm just working between my paint. And I'm going to come here on the inside corner of the eye. And I'm going to outline it. Watercolor goes where the water is. It is impacted by that uh, air and gravity. So that's, those are the things that I am controlling. And you can see I'm just working around this. Nudging. Nudging is one of my very favorite words. I nudge a lot. Nudging. That's lovely. Just starting to build a little, little thoughtful color. I might grab a little more brown.
maybe have this little mix over here be a little more brown. Now let's come right here. Under the hat, which is now dry. Bringing that in. I would like to... Mm, you don't have to be too precious around the nose. And the reason is, is that it's such a dark color. But I will not want to paint over it because I need to have room to lighten it. You see white here on my thing and that's wonderful and that's great for kids but in watercolor generally unless you're using a gouache to highlight something or an acrylic to highlight something the paper is our white let's continue here are you guys loving seeing this in like not expensive materials it's awesome i've been asking myself what can i do lately to to make life easier for you guys and i realized maybe showing you some workarounds on things that could feel perhaps expensive and then showing you how to make it not so much and you can see that the that the watercolor definitely layers and sheer glazes and i don't want to go down too far because i do want to paint in my wonderful delightful plants so i'll just go ahead and tap that up and you can see i can tap up any color i want and he can be looking a little strange right now, as they do. Now, if I want to come in and get a little more black on there, I can. And I can go ahead and start to think about my ears. I'm going to take curved strokes going out. And they're going to be longer here and come down shorter into here to do the little ears. Really all we're doing. A little darker under here. See how I come with a darker color to create that shadow or that effect of a shadow? Oh, sorry. Oh, love you, babe. I'm just working that along. Nice art materials are fantastic. I like having them. I'm very picky. John will tell you I'm super picky. Everyone who works with me will tell you I'm super picky. But it's also true. I'm going to paint this very carefully here. Trying to make sure we got nice little even ears across the board. Getting a little black there. I'm loading right off the pan. Come here and darken that. I think this time I got a little closer to the hat. That's okay. Maybe a little bit more over here. Just building up the layers. <laughs> Let me go ahead and get a little darker color on my brush right here. We just want to make sure that this little edge and that ear can read from each other. So can you see how doing that darkness did that? And then what I'm going to do is rinse that out to just water. And kind of blend and nudge that around here. I want my puffball to read as separate from the background. A little more black paint coming along. The paper's wet. I am picking up anything that like is running on a gravity. I 
I didn't really realize how valuable a skillet was to be able to work with kids materials like crayons and stuff and really do painting techniques until I started doing stuff at the schools yeah. with my kids. And then I was like, oh, wow, like this is this is something that isn't getting covered out there. Yeah. Um, everywhere. There are, of course, <clears throat> wonderful, tremendous art teachers who really do a good job. Uh, all, all teachers do a good job. But I know schools can be funded or underfunded. There's time. So many things are having to come out of the teacher's own budget, which I think is wrong. So when I started doing this at the schools and the teachers were like, oh, like, that's great. I love how you're doing that. And the kids would be so fascinated. I was like, oh, okay. Cleaning it up. Let's call that, a, let's call that an area because we did a lot of work there, didn't we? We'll let that have a little rest. We'll let that have a little, a little rest relax. Yeah, I get it. And I'm going to come in and work on this part of the painting. Now, I've got a green here. And I and one of the things I'd love you to do is, like, come up and you can test the color on your pa paper. That's pretty bright. So I might grab some of my browning color to neutralize it a little bit. And then over here, I might get into some yellow. And that should give me enough to do these. So. Much better. I did a test. I'm going to come here and plant a little line. You're going to see me make a little line. And then I'm going to press in and bend. Yeah, it's maybe not as brown as I would have liked, but it's okay. Uh, let's make sure we've got a little more of the brown in there. Now this one, I may paint very carefully, kind of leaving the center stem. Not paint it as much. Tuck in that leaf there. Line, line. So it's really just a leaf stroke, right? That's not too terrible. I have worked in gouache, but I've worked in it in a, in a, in a weird, uh, in a weird way. Um, so yes, some traditional painting, but the lion's share of the years of my experience in gouache is actually in uh, uh, illumination um, in medieval technique. So fun for me. <laughs> That's what I used to do. So yes. Yes, but like in traditional gold leafing and like making your own rabbit skin glue and all that kind of like deep core stuff. When my leaves are in, I'm going to want to do a fun thing now. First, Rinse out and get some clean water. And where my little balls are, I'm going to make little circles. Circle, circle, circle. Get a little bit of your red. Just let it bloom into that for a second. Now, again, because of gravity, I've really got to come in and clean up. Take a little bit of this red, maybe over to that blue. They're not going to make purple. They're going to do a lot what Cad Red and um, Ultramarine do, but it will still, it won't ever read as muddy to you because in watercolor, the colors are so transparent and they're so glazy. Sometimes they don't. Do we have any questions, John, while I'm painting in these little berries? I have forgotten to ask for a minute. Oh, there were, you, you caught the one there. Okay. Oh, I, I, well, what Amy was just asked, can you gold leaf with gouache? Uh, you can gold leaf over gouache, but gouache doesn't gold leaf. Gold leafing is the process of affixing a pounded out sheet of 24-hour gold to the surface. Now, I have a really cool version of it, Mona Lisa, as you guys know in my Zoom class. And I'm going to show you the not all of your bank account version. Though, John, I saw something on Jazz's channel where I just wanted to draw a 
take what little is left in our bank account and go crazy buying art materials. Apparently, there's a clay that's made of silver, and when you heat it, it turns, it becomes silver. So you sculpt it, and then you just hit it with a torch, and then it's like a silver sculpture, and it's real silver. So 800 pounds is like just a few pouches, but I was like, losing my mind. I was like, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. So I'm taking this sort of darker color and I'm coming in the bottom there and just making sure that my little berries have some shading. Now, if I rinse out in the center, I'll come over here to my clean water and I've got a damp brush. I can come in and um, blend too. In shape, I can just make things a little bit better. So one of the things you'll notice that's different about watercolor from acrylic is that you can reactivate the paint really, really easily. Mm. Let's call that a step. We got, Did some, you pre -wet we the got leaves? some stuff down here. Did you pre-wet those leaves? I, I didn't pre-wet the leaves. I did a touch-pull stroke on them. And mm. I have 32 watercolor techniques that every beginner needs to know and an introduction to watercolor. If you're like, this is kind of cool. I want to know more. Um, I had a second channel for watercolor. Um, but I've just started moving everything over to the main channel lately. Mm. I'm going to rinse out. You ready to do the hat? Let's do some hat. Now, the hat I am going to pre-wet. So I'll start with the part of the hat that's in the fold. And I'm going to do an interesting thing here. I am going to go into the ball. I think I will come along there. But I don't want to go into the main part of the hat. Let's get our red. Just whatever red we have in our palette. You get whatever red you have. I'll grab... That was beautiful. Better than I expected. Sometimes with watercolor, you don't work very hard to, to get there. Let me come along that line. And what you're going to notice is that this watercolor just painted itself into the hat, didn't it? Grab a lot more red right there. So gravity is working in on this. There you go. Hmm. Looking quite good. And you might think to yourself, you might ask yourself, is this my beautiful wife? <laughs> you might ask yourself, is this my red on my koala? Watching the days go by. I'm just lightly wetting it out with a pink. But it's like pink. Not going to touch my pink to that dark red yet. And you can see how if the paper's pre-wet, the watercolor flows through. Deborah Evans is adorable painting. Thank you, Deborah. Another thing that I can do is I can paint the spaces. Um, they're called kind of the negative spaces. So say I've got this fur cap. If I come in here and tap out a little bit of red into it, it will make it seem like some of the fur is letting the background cap show through. I'm going to take a little bit of my black and red together. And now that the top of the hat is just dry enough. Paint that over a little bit. And I will tap down into the fur to show the shadow of the fur. Let's go ahead and kind of work that out. You see how I work the water brush back into it and I'm allowing it to sort of all bloom together. Take a little bit of the red and black. Just along that little fur line. What you will find with watercolor, the big thing is giving your 
art, your painting, whatever it is, time to dry and uh, time to settle. What happens is the pigment affixes into the uh, paper. So there's a sizing on top of it, and that's what allows the bloom and a lot of these watercolor effects. Some of you had felt like the only papers that would do that were really, really high end. And what I'm going to suggest to you, it's more about the paper company that you're working with. What's that? Oh yeah, it looks like let me see something. Something happened here. They do do do. What happened to you? It fell off and then it turned off. Hmm, that's weird. Okay. Well, I'm gonna tell you what. I'm gonna get you some new batteries real quick. So. So it just, it, I'm not sure, I think it just popped off. So give me a second, guys. I'm not exactly sure what happened there. That's super weird. She's going to do this. Give me just a minute. I'm going to run over and grab some batteries while she's still there, kind of quiet. I'll choose not to panic about that. Let's let's. I'm gonna put my other pad up here so just we have nicer, cleaner. Okay. Do we that back, so, guys? All right. All right. She's gonna go back over that. So hold on just a second. Uh, it's 110 pound, but I think we're okay. Am I in sketch pad? Her battery. Sketch? No, so what happened? Getting... Well, yeah. Her her battery just is, cut out there, guys. Is it back? Yeah, it's back. Right. Let's come. I'll come right here. So first, I'm gonna show you this. This is just some watercolor basics, so you guys know. Watercolor goes where the water is so if i get my brush wet and i load it on the tip with the red paint and i go like this it isn't going to go anywhere even with the gravity too much past where my brush strokes go and you can see i can make tiny ones and big ones and it fairly stays there but say it came up with some some lines that were close to this this is wet and my lines coming in are wet and this line touched that line and then touch that line. You can see where they touch, the green starts to bloom into that. But I can go right up to it. And if, as long as I don't touch those two areas of water, everybody stays contained. All right, so if I pre-wet an area out, and I don't want the water to go somewhere like say right there i very carefully left out a hole even as this dries it's never going to go right there it won't ever go in where i didn't paint it to stay is where i put it it's lovely in that way so i hope that helps love doing that all right, back to my cute koala with my kid stuff. I love this nose. I'm going to get into this nose. 
into the nose. All right. So now I might, because I'm using a very dark paint, come in and very lightly just think about my sketch. This is a kid's pencil for school. I do have art pencils everywhere, but I just want you to understand an HB pencil is just a lead. It's a pencil lead. It's a softness of pencil lead. It's a middle hard, middle dark pencil. It's the most middle of all middles and a bunch of scanners can read it. HB. If it starts being 6B, 4B, 3B, 2B, it's blacker. If it starts being H1, H2, H3, it's harder and lighter. That's pencils. Your pencil in your school cases are, are you know, they're, they're as good as any fine art pencil you'd have to worry about. I'm just making sure that my nose has got a sketch that I like. I want to also make sure that my my little cute mouth here is a bit not con like charming, if that makes sense. So once I have that, I, I am defining those lines a little more in. I'm going to get some wet, wet, some water. I'm interestingly enough, not going to paint inside my nostrils quite yet. And I have left a little bit unpainted. And I'm going to take my black and I'm going to load up hard. That's a lot of pigment on there. And come around the outside edge of what I have pre-wet. A little water and I did a rinse out. Decided to leave a little reflection right there. And now I'm going to do an important thing. I'm going to come here with my paper towel. Lift up a little pigment. Load up with whatever black you've got. And come back. Sometimes we have to remember that we can do art with whatever we got on hand. We are okay. I don't like that hard line, so I'm going to come in with my brush and wiggle it. I can even take a little of my black and my blue together to kind of create a Payne's gray. I'm on that far side with that. Even kind of come down here. Now, as that dries, it will soften out and will continue to be the awesome. Shall we continue on our our journey? And then grab a little bit more brown over to my green. Kind of through that flow. Just kind of adding a little more dimensionality to leave. And I really didn't like that green. Now under the chin, I'm back into my black. Black, 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 black. My brown. As a build-up, oh, I guess we could call it a new step. We did a lot, didn't we? Yeah, I think so. Right, let us try to keep that cute little chin. They do. They have chins. It's so weird. They have chins.
Now I'm going to paint very carefully around my leaves. I'm going to try to touch them as little possible where they're wet with my paint so that they stay sharp. I will let this kind of come out maybe into a wash out this way. Add a little yellow just to warm it up. Sometimes I'll do that into my brown to create kind of an ochre in any paint palette. If you take your yellow into your brown, you're going to be getting an ochre. There's just some color mixing that it doesn't matter what medium you're using. It doesn't matter what paint you're working with. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It just does its thing. Coming under the shoulders there. And you can see because it was wet already, it starts to bloom and shade out. You can always get my brush to stamp and make sure that this maybe too much shoulder, but that's fine. So you just move that all around, get back into the, the depth color. And you can paint very carefully around leaves if you need to. Maybe a little bit of black. A little darker under here. Again, I'm just using the brush that came in the set. Not an expensive set either. Now, this does mean that you do have to think about why art materials are good. And cost can't be the only factor that lets you know that because this isn't high cost, but they have a lot of quality elements to them. Hmm. All right. Shall we call that a step? I'm going to continue on. Yes, Let's did you move. see what Kathy said there? I did not see what Kathy said. Tell me what Kathy said. Uh, I said, oh, Kathy Volk, anyone, which, which do you prefer, watercolor or watercolor pencils? Haven't tried either. Is that the one? Mm -hmm. um, so watercolor comes in pencil, pen, ink, pan, <coughs> tube, powder, sheet. I may be forgetting one. But it's all essentially the same. So uh, my watercolor pencils, I, I like Caron d'Ache in watercolor pencils quite a lot. They're my favorite. Um, Derwent's, Derwent's got some great stuff. Like I, I like their ink tents, but they're not technically watercolor because once they're dry, they are done. But they do make a good watercolor pencil. Um, but basically, it's all still just the pigment in gum Arabic and then stabilized for the pencil or for the different applications. And so they're very interchangeable. Um, if you're working with pencils, even if you're not working with Caron d'Ache, you want to get their thumb palette. It just sits on your thumb, but you can scrape the pencils on it. It's got a slightly rough surface and you wet that out so you can use them as pencils and watercolors. If I find both things as we're unpacking, I'll throw up a video. <laughs> but they're missing right now. Okay. Here we go. Shall we do another step, sir, or did we already? I, we might have. Okay, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to start thinking about my eyes. 
as you do. And I'm going to come in at them very gently. I want to leave light color here in the inner corner. So I come in and sketch with my brush very carefully the inside area that I will be painting. And then I'm going to go ahead and just touch out a little bit of brown at the moment. And I'll pick up a little. And get a little bit of black just on the toe of my brush. The toe of your brush is this point. It's the tip. So brushes have bellies and toes and heels. This is your heel. This is your belly. This is your toe. And a watercolor brush, its work is done mostly through the belly and the toe on how it releases pigment into the water. And I'm going to come around this and just kind of do a darkened ring. And that one's blending more on the right than on the left because it was still wet. So I'm going to smidge, 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 smidge. And then a little darker under here. I'm starting to put that in a little more. I might take some orange. Look at that go. I'm going to put some orange in the eye. Just orange. Come underneath here. I'm going to come underneath here in a little C. Just for right now. I'm also going to come right into my brown. I'm going to start to work in my little koala nostrils, which are a little hard to read right now, but are about to be a lot easier to read as I shade in the structure of that nose. That's looking quite lovely. Got a little gray. Now, you will notice that you have to, during a painting session, probably remist or, you know, keep activating your pans because they do dry out on the Mikador set. Again, that is not a uh, Senele problem. <laughs> they, uh, they don't. They are perfect always. Very carefully kind of working the lidding around here. A little bit of dark right there. Let's come in kind of in. I don't, you're not, so here's the trick. Don't use this like it's acrylic. You should not be gouache painting this in, in, in or um, acrylic painting it. You're not doing thick applications of anything. Because sometimes in gouache, your application can feel a little thicker. It's, it's, it's not, it's just the nature of the paint. But the trick is to figure out the materials that you have, that you're working with today. Do you need to mist all watercolors? Um, all pan watercolors, I would either do a drop. Okay, so there's two ways to do it. Dropper. You can go through that or you can do a mist. For pans. Now, on dry watercolor that you were using from before, so say I squeezed out from the tube and I have a bunch of dried tube watercolors on my palette, 
that are left over. I just miss that. That reactivates all of that, and I can use them repeatedly in every painting session. It's pretty awesome, actually. Come here and add some more value. A little darker. Building up in layers is one of those things that I think really helps because you can always add. Add, 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 add. Shall we do a new step, John? I'm going to yeah, add a little brown. A I'm back into my brown and black. Just making sure I've got a nice amount of that. Why do you dab the brush on the paper towel before applying it to the paper? Um, sometimes I need to control how much water is on there. And sometimes um, I need to pull water off. So what this does is this pulls water out of my brush. I'll show you why. All right, we're going to come here, I think, and I'm going to make a, a drop. And then I'll put some red in it so we can really, really see it. So you can see how that drop is super heavy. If I come to my paper towel and I pull the moisture out of it, right, or I can just touch it, it just takes a touch, then I can hoover up my drop. So I was able to hoover that up. And that is a way to control the amount of water paint that's on my brush so that's that's a lot of what you see me doing there is pulling paint up putting it down putting it in, pulling it up putting it down huh brooke says had difficulty reactivating watercolors on the paper why would that be you're sizing what paper are you using let me know what paper i can tell you when the problem happened and help you prevent it the next time And I'm very carefully kind of come around these little eyes. And I'm leaving a little bit of this lighter color. And I'm going to leave some light space around here and the nose. And do we know the paper yet? Brooke says 140 pounds. That's a good weight, but it's not the weight of your paper that's messing with you. It's the sizing on your paper. <sighs> that's why. That's a, they cut corners and quality. So I know that they are, I, I, I'm going to give you the straight ho hobby lobby talk here. And it's not about any of the stuff that people lose their mind about. I'm just going to talk about it philosophically. If you're an artist and your work is commercial, you will see a version of it there. Or at least that happened a lot in the past, in my opinion. If you developed a new art product, you would see a cheaper and not as quality version of it there. So philosophically, a long time ago, before all the other stuff about them came out, I had already kind of stepped away from them because I don't enjoy that practice, right? And so I pulled away. But what I can tell you is I've been on here for 10 years. There are stores I get complaints about quality from and stores that I don't hear complaints about quality from. And Hobby Lobby is one that consistently in my group, people buy products that do not perform as intended or expected, especially from the house lines. This is a separate issue than all the other stuff that people are legitimately worried about. And that's true of art companies. Here's a surprise place that you can buy quality art materials on sale sometimes. You want to know a secret? Tuesday morning, on occasion, sells quality art supplies on sale. No, you wouldn't know to go our, in there. This is just so. our opinion, but that's my opinion. Yep, that is absolutely my opinion, and um, I have not done a scientific study of it all. But it's just it's just my own personal shopping habits, and sometimes when I say, "Well, I don't shop at Hobby Lobby as much anymore." Um, it's for all the other stuff that's come out over the recent years, which is real and valid. And people, you know, have a right to totally think about that. I certainly think about that. But the truth is, it started way before that about the McKenzie and Child's lookalike line. Now, I'm a huge fan of the artwork, not necessarily the politics or the beliefs or any of the McKenzie and Child's, but as the artists, as their artwork, John will tell you, I have loved them with a fire of a thousand suns. If I were rich, I would buy everything that they had ever made. I would go to their houseboat and buy work from them. I think they're incredible. 
Sometimes they make things that make me want to cry. So to see that knocked off, to me, it was a moment for me. And I think as consumers, we're all allowed to have a moment. I didn't cancel them. I'm never going to. I don't want. It's a business. They're fine. They're okay. But sometimes as a consumer, I can decide I don't like how they collect the cheese. And I don't want to help them collect any more cheese. So that is my opinion. That was a longer. I'm going to add a little shadow to my little chinning here. But that's that's why. Now, if they decide to carry Fabriano, you can then give that a good try. And sometimes they have, um, I don't remember, I haven't been in there for years. So if you know them and you know if they have arches, arches is sometimes a good product. So in paper. I'm just painting around, just building up the layers. You can see, but, so he's a little browner from like my original, right? There are some differences, but but you could just have any red. You can see, I still have red hat. I still have fur. I could gray him more, but I, I like where he's going. And again, I haven't, I'm just doing this stuff. Nothing fancy. Cheap Joe's is awesome. 100% agree. Oh, and Moderator Rainbow. Ho Hobby Lobby does carry arches. So if you shop in the lobby where you hobby, arches. It'll hit your pocketbook, but at least it'll work. Or it used to. They recently got purchased by uh, another company. So sometimes that changes how companies uh, perform. But they used to be very popular. I've added a little bit more black. And come here and maybe... Uh, Kind of think about the facing, the shape facing. Maybe a little darker than I wanted, but I can come back and smooch it out. Oh, Atoll says like, yeah, Hobby Lo their Hobby Lobby has so much stuff that they are not into that um, it's frustrating for them. It's a, it's a it's an art and hobby store, right? So they're gonna have a you know a, a variety of things. I think it's gonna be easier to set this line with paint. I'm going to load up some black. Just make sure that I've got a good shadow. And that does seem to be pulling those objects separate of each other. So is there a difference in quality? Of course there is. There's there's always differences in results and quality. But if you, like, if, like... I can get closer to my cat if I were to take my orange and my red up here. You can see that's a much more orange red. You know, you can nudge anything to where you need it to be if you want it to be there. Uh, what do you guys think of Strathmore watercolor holiday card paper? Depends on the batch. You have to think of Strathmore in terms of that. Depends on the run. Sometimes I find... I like Strathmore as a company, like a lot, like they're everywhere and I like it, but I do also understand sometimes I buy a pad of paper that does not work like the last pad of paper. That's just <laughs> Sorry, the thing that's happened. You could, this could be done in acrylic too. Oh yeah, of course. You can do this absolutely in acrylic. I'm going to come here and just add a little more water to the side. See, I'm nudging. Nudging is a is a wonderful thing to do when you're with weird art supplies. Oh, I didn't hear that Joe Miller passed away a couple of weeks ago. Um, 
I did not hear that. I'm really sorry to hear that. Very sorry to hear that, guys. All right. So we're just kind of looking at all the little places to nudge. Let's come back into our eyes for a second because they're so lovely. And we're going to get some dark color. I'm going to use my paint here and I'm coming to activate my black up there. Let's come in just the inside line of that eye for a second. And come over here and do kind of a similar thing. Well, that's not, that's actually, this is all for just, you know, kind of worked out. And I'm going to come here and uh, I think there's going to kind of increase the fluff. So I'm just taking a little bit of my black and brown and just maybe thinking about some of the ways that this could be laying there. Adding a little bit of shadow right there. Just pull a little color up. So you can see as you're going, you can do you can do a lot down and a lot up. Yeah. You know, and we haven't gotten pencils involved at all. We haven't pulled another art material into this. We've done nothing but play. And be loose about it. And it works really because the magic Because this koala had its coffee. This koala did have his coffee. I may not have had my <laughs> coffee, but this koala definitely had coffee. And and I, I, I should let you know, definitely, if you are not a person who celebrates Christmas, or if you are a person who is alone, you do celebrate, but you're alone, or if you just need a break from the people that you do celebrate Christmas with, we are doing an event on Christmas Day, and I want to give you guys a sneak peek to know what it is. You guys want to know? Because it's a big deal. It makes me want to kind of cry. I'm so excited. I'm going to redesign my color purple painting for the premiere of the color purple on christmas Day. so i'm redesigning it in uh, a lot of it is just because I, and i'll go over it at the time it just needs a redesign because i think my painting is sometimes misunderstood and i had really created it from such a great space but i recognize that its execution had not been quite where i wanted it and I, was, I wanted to come back and visit that again so much because i love that book so much and i love the author and i just think it's incredible and i love oprah there's so many intersections of love 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 so that's what I'm going to be doing on that day. My um, sound thing fell off and fell down my shirt, John. But sound thing just fell down my shirt. It's, it's, it fell down oh, this. Okay, I can because I can feel the little cable. All right. So if that's something, if uh, I, I, we're thinking of starting around one, um, check your newsletter. Be sure you sign up for the newsletter, and I'll post it everywhere and let you guys know. And then after we're done, my mom is going to go on. And I think for the patrons, we're going to have a uh, Zoom watch party so you guys can watch together. And that's for all patrons on that day where you guys can just all watch together. So that is our plan. Um, and if, if you are not busy and that's something that would help you or help you get through the holidays or deal with, you know, seasonal affective disorder, any of that, my mom and I, um, our gift to you guys for being such the best community in the entire world is to be here for you on the holidays. So we are going to be live Christmas Day. Watch your newsletter. We'll do something. And come here and just add a little darker color maybe to the top of that eye. Oh, that one got away from me. 
didn't like where that one went. That'll happen sometimes in watercolor where stuff will get away from you. You won't like where it goes and you have to nudge it back. And that is a little more upsetting. I don't, uh, I don't know what a P -E PTT is. Um, so Brooke says, how do you clean out your PTT? And I'm not sure. Mm, don't know either. Uh, Tavia says the lightness that watercolor has sh and, and how you can use all the different colors together is just really neat, I think. I, oh, uh, a mod cat red is going to be with family. And most of our mods are not going to be here. And we don't expect any of them. Our mods get the holidays off. Like, we just open up the group. You all post. Please remember the group rules on Facebook to post. But we just let you guys post because it's the holidays. And we don't want to have to. We want everyone to have some time off. So that's what we do. I'm going to come here and kind of fix up where it, uh, oopsie here and and the reason i feel that like i feel like i had some clean readable information and then when i put that last one it came on it was just a little bit not where i wanted it to be just making sure that's got a nice thing now in this one case i do use this right here so i'm going to get it wet I can also use acrylic, which works really, really, really well. But I want to I wanna just stay within stuff. <gasps> Your or, palette. And if this doesn't work, I have a gel pen too. But I just want to stay with stuff that you might just have with you or around you that you could have. Brooke was trying to ask, how do you clean out your palette? Palette. This? Well, you can. So one. So some artists, what they do is they come through with a damp mop brush and they just pick up all the paint and use it as a wash on something else. You ever want to see that uh, color, color my life? The three amigos, you'll see them do that. Uh, you can weirdly um, also just rinse it on this kind, not the good kind. You wouldn't do this with the good, but this kind I can just kind of give it a quick rinse underwater and then clean. I reset kids' palettes all the time for watercolor paint because they can mess up the uh, paint pops like this and then I'll clean it. Maybe we'll make a video. Okay, so there is a way that I do that, but generally I just and just wipe it clean. All right, my husband brought me... Okay, this is pulling this right off my ear. <sighs> it's just pulling it off my ear. <laughs> and today is... I, am I wearing a weird bra today? Is that what it is? Okay. I'm wearing a weird... It's, it's like down my pants now. <laughs> is it live? Yeah, maybe. Okay. I don't have a pocket. It looks like I should have... Just put it behind me, I guess. Because we're, we're literally almost there, so I'm going to let John reset me. All right, I'm going to take my white now. I'm going to load it up fairly thick. This will be the thick application that I use because, well, I'm going to be using this almost like it's a gouache. Right, so a thick, opaque watercolor. I'm going to take it right here. And I'm going to add a little bit of white there. And I may come in and add a little bit here just to improve its clarity. You can see I'm just doing little circular brushes, brush strokes. And that will lay on it. It just adds a slightly lighter, you know, if you had anything that got too dark on, you could come back in. I'm also, I think I'll go ahead and. Hit some highlights on the berries. I think that's actually pretty good. Yeah, I think we're, guys, I think we're there. I think. All right, so the challenge was. Huh? I think it turned out great. I think we did really good. The challenge was to do something I would normally do with my San LA. Uh, you know, honey based tube squeeze in watercolors of juicy juice or my core or any of my really, really expensive art materials. I have brushes that are three hundred dollars or something like that. And this is totally worth it when you see what he does, right? He takes an escoda and turns it into this. But I'm saying I didn't have to go get this brush to do this painting. I did what was in my kids set for ages three to eight on a multimedia pad. Don't 
Art materials are awesome, and I will always tell you what's good and what's worth your time and what's worth your money and what's not. I'm for that. I think that's an important part of what we do. Um, but I think it's also important to remember as artists that the reason that we have quality materials is because there are two factors that come into play for us as creatives. The first factor is what we do while we're being creative. The time you and I just spent together to paint this little koala and the experience that we had doing it. And then how long will this koala last after today? So artists, not Turner, but artists <laughs> would think about, not Van Gogh, but artists <laughs> would think about how long can my painting last? Because a lot of times the artwork you see in the museum was not the best painter of its day, but the best material scientist of its day like that artist chose better varnish that didn't yellow that artist chose better paint that didn't fade out that canvas held up you know so sometimes it's not that you have to have like the best of the best of the best sir it's that these materials are also designed not just for use or layering or quality or production or pigment but for longevity and the combination of vibrancy and longevity increase the cost of art materials and then if you add danger into that, like cadmium red is a very dangerous pigment to make into a paint. Not to use, like, don't eat your cadmium. That would not be healthy. Don't eat cad. Don't eat any cadmium. Don't lick batteries. Don't do any of that. But it's not bioavailable to us in paint. And we're going from the palette to the canvas, like with lead. Um, but to make it, you are exposed to the cadmium and to the lead. So... The cost of art materials, when we're looking at that philosophically, is that was it very dangerous for the paint company to make it? Was the material expensive to source? Uh, if, if it's very vibrant and it lasts a long time, it's going to be really costly because those are always hard to find and make. That is, that is the initial concept of what should be pricing between professional student grade paints, right? Like, so student grade should still be quality. It should work like the kind that you would be using if you were selling to clients or consumers but it might not last as long and it may not be as vibrant which i think we kind of see here right in, in sort of a way and, and and if i put this in a window it might fade faster than my um senile aquail watercolors would that's that's the cost that doesn't mean that you as a consumer have to put up with junk Lots of companies make great low cost cost materials. Uh, Fabriano does. Um, Sen LAA does. I love this Mikador, these kids. These are really good paints. Like, even though they're kids' paints and they're easy on the pocketbook and they're wonderful and friendly for small hands and all that stuff that they are developmentally and they're all steam and all that stuff, they're just also quality. They're not tremendously vibrant and they may not last 50 years, but they were awesome to paint with today. And that brush For was sure. just fine. Yeah. And look, here's this cheap little brush where the crimp managed to stay on the brush. <laughs> it so, works. You know how that goes. doesn't have to be expensive to work. Uh, what are we painting on Christmas Day? We are painting a remake of the My Color Purple design. Um, I'm going to probably take that painting down. And, or I'll give it to patrons, and I'm going to replace it with this new design for the premiere. I wanted to do the color purple on the holiday. One, because I grew up a kid who did not celebrate the holiday because we were Jehovah's Witness. And I'm, I'm not currently, but I was as a child. So that wasn't something that I did. I know that we have members of the Jewish community that aren't celebrating, Islamic community that are not celebrating. And, you know, but a, lot of, a lot of places aren't celebrating. And I want to make sure that everybody has a seat at the table. It's like kind of like the come on in day. And so the color purple felt like a beautiful intersection of coming together. I also was worried about seasonal affective disorder. And I'll talk about this a little bit again. But I, I had a Santa that I think it, it ended up being bumped to next year. And the reason is, is that I felt like if people were going through seasonal affective disorder, painting a very sentimental Christmas scene could actually exacerbate how we're feeling and a good doctor friend of mine during an art retreat I got to go to came down and sat with me and he said pay attention he's like I've seen your community he's like pay attention to where you hold their focus yeah because it'll impact their mental health and that was a specialty that he was in and I was like you know that's really true I have to be very careful 
about the types of things that I share and paint with you because we can be impactful in that way. So that's why I have picked a, a, a color purple. Um, and, and also, I just love the author and I love that story. And you guys, this also is the second most requested thing that I haven't done. So color purple, the theme. But the actual scene, which is going to be surprise reveal too on Christmas Day as a gift. Um, so you'll just see a purple thumbnail. Right. So save that if you're looking for that. But it, when you see it will be something that you guys have also been asking for really heavily this last year. And it allowed me to create an intersection of my most requested topic and one of my favorite things. And so you're the best community ever. And I want you to know that you're my gift. Yeah. I, I have won the lottery in communities. I go to gaming streams. I've seen Mark Plyer. I have the best community on the internet. I do. I do. You guys are amazing. I've seen you out in the world. You're kind. You're smart. You're creative. And you make the world a better place. And you are not tearing it down. So I'm super grateful for you guys being in my life. Yeah. Thank you. So happy to do this for you this Christmas. Now, be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you Thursday to paint a really long horse. All right. Bye-bye.